Let's speak about SoFi stock. What is happening, investors? It is your boy Jack. I am not a financial advisor, and we're finally making the SoFi video. I've been getting asked quite a bit as of late to cover these guys. It's one we covered back in the day on the channel when they initially went public, when you know they went on some juicy runs, but we haven't spoken about them in quite a while. And I understand why people want me to speak about them because they are at very, very, very interesting prices, down over 80% from their all time highs relatively decently valued in quite a few different ways some exciting acquisitions over the last year some really exciting news over the last month in regards to what could make them a lot more money going forwards and could lead to the multiply going up in value very shortly so in today's video what i want to do is really quickly we're just going to go over who so far are what the most recent catalysts have been for them what i personally think could happen next if i would consider buying them and then there's also just ooh, two seconds. Where are we over here? Quite a few things I want to speak about in regards to acquisitions that have happened as of late and where their income is currently coming from. So my friends, if that sounds good to you, could I please ask you for a nice early thumbs up on the video? It really does help me out an awful lot. Subscribe if you're new around here and you want more juicy content. We're trying to stick to double uploads for the most part during the week. And drop me a comment down below. I want to know, are you a SoFi investor? Or are you thinking about getting involved? So, I mean, if you don't have a clue who SoFi are, if you just want a quick reminder, okay, about SoFi, they help people achieve financial independence to realize their ambitions. Our products for borrowing, saving, spending, investing, and protecting give our more than 1 million members, way more than that at this stage, fast access to tools to get their money right. SoFi membership comes with key essentials for getting ahead, including career advisors and connections to a thriving community of like-minded, ambitious people. Now they can generally be brought down to three, now they can be brought down to three primary revenue segments, those being financial services, lending, which we're gonna be speaking a lot about today because it's potentially their biggest catalyst in the short term and their technology platforms. So the easiest way to explain this current catalyst is to just go to this article, okay? So you'll see this actually came out nearly a month ago, August 25th. So the 24th of August, Biden announced student debt forgiveness plan. And you can see that they went from about $6.15 a share all up to $6.92 in the span of a day before actually coming back down to $6.48. And ultimately, they gave up all of those gains over the coming days. So why is this so important? Well, this plan provides a measure of certainty for the company that has a large chunk of business in refinancing student loans. So that's one service that Sophie offers. Student loan repayments are now set to resume on January 2023 after two years on pause. This announcement is an important step towards removing a key overhang for Sophie, as an end to the moratorium should drive a surge in private student loan refi volumes in 2023, says Morgan Ann. Morgan Stanley analyst. As a result, he has raised his 2023 adjusted revenue forecast for the fintech stock by 4% and projects 2023 EBITDA of $322 million, up 18% from prior estimates. So you can see that this piece of news obviously increased the fundamentals of this company greatly. Baked into those estimates are $6.7 billion of student loan refi organizations, up from his earlier $4.5 billion estimate. The government plan isn't all good news for SoFi, though, as the loan forgiveness will shrink the company's total addressable market. So this is important to understand, and this is what could make some choppy movement over the coming months, said Oppenheimer analyst. About 68% of student loan recipients could have incomes of under 120000 And while 34% of recipients had less than 10000 of debt in Q2 2019, 7% of total borrowers accounted for about 34% of balances altogether. Really simply put, with student loan repayments frozen since the pandemic started, Borrowers have had no incentive to refinance their student loans, which has been a large part of the firm's business. So, so far, I got hit by the Roni quite hard here, their largest revenue segment. Now, with that being said, the company has seen its personal loan segment surging. They originated almost $2.5 billion in personal loans in Q2, up 21% year over year, and more than doubling since its 2019 quarterly averages. Student loan volume of nearly $399 million was down 25% of the average pre-pandemic volume, as the moratorium on student loan business continues to weigh on the business. So really, this was a huge piece of news as it does just make, you know, the, the company's short, medium and longer term outlooks much clearer. And what this has led to then, September 14th, we got this article. So by Technologies raised to a buy at Bank of America, a student debt relief removes a major overhang. So they went up about 3.2% early Wednesday trading after Bank of America securities analyst upgraded the fintech to buy from neutral, 
on the basis of a favorable risk reward setup as well as a potentially emerging path of catalyst. They pointed to a meaningful catalyst path over the next few quarters, a SoFi, of which a large portion of its business involves refinancing student loans, benefits from an end to the student loan payment moratorium. So this student debt relief plan removes a major overhang for SoFi and could provide incremental upside to 2022 estimates. I mean, guys, if you do look at the revenue by segment, you will see that, um, yeah. <laughs> As of Q3 2021, it was at 76.99%, this lending sector, compared to their technology platforms and financial services. If we look at their Q2 2022 investor presentation, you can see that it is still the large majority of what is going on for this company right now, despite growth all across the board, which we will look at shortly. But before we do that, I want to take a look at this relatively bullish article here that uh, says some of the good points about SoFi right now and some of the potential reasons to buy the company. They say SoFi is cheap and getting cheaper with each earnings result. The company's current issues are temporary and result from outside factors. It was largely down to the Roni. And obviously, you know, they don't decide <laughs> what's going to happen in, in the president's office in regards to student loans. And membership now has a clear pathway to 10 million members by fiscal 2024, which is huge. For the record, members as of this moment of time are about 4.3 million, up 69% year over year. The growth has been incredible. And you can see the numbers here. You can see the percentages have been huge. So yes, there is a clear pathway here if they can keep up these numbers. Sophie is cheap. This is on the basis of its current low forward price to sales multiple of 3.8 times despite forecasted compound annual revenue growth for the next three years up to fiscal 2025 set to be at least 34%. So already trading at a 3.8 times forward price to sales ratio and they have that expected growth. The second fact is that Sofi holds a dominant position in the market for free refinancing student loans. Now, it has to be said that they obviously are not the only competitor here. This has long been held back by the now lifted student loan repayments moratorium. While Sofi is more than just a student loan refinancing company, the impact of the commencement of long pause loan repayments will be multifaceted, but will critically center around supercharging Sofi's flywheel and helping grow the company's membership, which is exactly what we want right now if you were to be an investor. To put it another way, the pause entirely dissuaded millions of students from refinancing their loans over the last two and a half years since its implementation. As Sofi has a leading position in this market, its membership growth has been constrained. The current membership of 4.3 million will be much higher as these have not been implemented. The impact of a return to normality was highlighted by a 5.7% month over month increase in visits to SoFi.com in August as some students move to get ahead of the loan repayment restart. This is clearly the time for the company to put the accelerator on new marketing spend, which management commenced with a new campaign featuring the Los Angeles Chargers quarterback. Again, a lot of people like to see this. Uh, SoFi is known for, you know, being in with a younger crowds that is a lot of their target audience but you will see that when we speak about some of their um recent acquisitions as well and they now have a clear pathway to 10 million members you can see the estimates here and it would be fantastic for the company and the year over year percentage growth aren't insane given what we've had so far these estimates are not cognizant of the potential impact the end of the student loan moratorium will have you can assume that as a base minimum it would see a year over year growth remain at over 50 percent for the next three fiscal years this contextualizes the current low price to sales ratio bears would be right to state that a recession would set back these growth rates significantly and add further headwinds to the business model and they have been facing headwinds since going public essentially that is the big piece of news right now though and that is the primary reason people will consider buying sofa right now and people are buying sofa right now that is that they are the reasons okay now one thing just really quick look at the financials you look at annual revenue compared to earnings i mean uh revenue is looking better earnings are getting worse so people will very 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 much so hope that the next couple of quarters could be considerably better somewhat mixed bag with analysts here but it's just strong buys buys and holds as of july and august pretty much no sales no underperforms we can see some recent updates here obviously the bank of america one being the most recent was upgraded to a buy Seaport Global have them at neutral. Morgan Stanley maintained them at equal weight on the 25th of last month. Yeah, there's still some decent coverage here. Now, two things I really like to see is that even as they have been facing all of these headwinds, we are getting news like this, okay? Now, these aren't new things that have happened, but they are things that they have done in the face of all of these issues. So, they acquired Galileo Financial Technologies, the powerful financial services API and payments platform. So, if I will pay a total purchase consideration of about 1.2 billion to acquire Galileo comprising of cash and stock. Their digital payments platform enables critical checking and savings account like functionality via its powerful open APIs, providing companies with an easy way to create sophisticated consumer and B2B financial services. So Galileo is the API standard for card issuing. It's a global payments platform that powers world leading fintechs, financial services and investment firms by removing the complexity of payments. 
They make it fast and easy for businesses of every type and size to innovate and deliver amazing user experience to their customers. Now, somewhat more recently, we see here February 22nd, 2022, sold by to buy a banking infrastructure firm, Technosys, for about $1.1 billion in an all-stock deal. So if I will use their platform to roll out personalized financial services to its own banking customers, it will also allow other banks and financial technology companies to use the platform, which today is mostly used by banks in Latin America. So despite headwinds, despite adversity, they have been working to grow, and they are doing a good job, all things considered. They're doing as best as they can. We see great member growth. We see great numbers in the product growth here. We see the Galileo accounts going up at great rates as well. Their lending products, year-over-year -year growth of 22%. Their financial services product, year-over-year -year growth of 100%. Now, when you look at the chart, I mean, it still looks uh, very sad. <laughs> it still looks terrible. I don't think there's any real two ways of going about that. The best thing we can say about it is they did, to an extent, break this really long-term downtrend when they made a higher low followed by a higher high. But it's not really in any sort of clear direction to the upside whatsoever. If best case scenario is pretty much consolidating somewhere between about 550 and 650 ish a share right now, uh, I'm not sure just how good of news <laughs> people are going to need in order to send this stock up in the short term. From a long term investment point of view, they're doing good things though, and I personally am going to keep up to date with them from this moment forward. They're getting added to the watch list. I do think it's going to take a lot of patience though, and I do think there's going to be a lot of uncertainties along the way, a lot of volatility along the way. I'm not particularly happy to open up a position just yet, but, you know, maybe we get a good quarter or two here and there. We see how much of a difference, you know, everything that Biden's doing right now actually makes on the company's fundamentals and quarterly reports going forwards, and then I will consider. But anyway, my friends, that is my video on SoFi stock today. If you've watched all the way till the end, you, my friend, are a true legend, and I really do appreciate you being here from the bottom of my heart. Your support means the world to me, baby. If you enjoyed the video, could I please ask you to hit that juicy like button? Drop me a comment down below and subscribe if you're new around here because all of that helps out me so much. Anyway, guys, I hope you all have a beautiful, blessed day. I'm going to see you for another video very soon. Peace.